Good morning. In Sweden, we don't have free speech anymore. It's an old tradition, free speech in Sweden, but we don't anymore. Uh, there's another great YouTube channel that has been closed down. It's called Svensk Web Television, Swedish Web Television. And it's all in Swedish and very popular here in Sweden. Closed down by YouTube. They do talks about mainstream media and politics. It's very polite. You know, I watch it sometimes. Crazy. And they talked to the creator and he said there was no warning, not a single one. And then he said, but the channel has become increasingly popular lately. They have more than a million views a month. See, that's the problem, I think. They will tell you, the establishment, they will tell you, yes, you are free to speak, but uh, we don't want people to listen to you. No, no, no. See, they cannot tolerate this. Uh, same thing all over the place, isn't it? We see Tommy Robinson, uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Black Pigeon Speaks. Yeah, they are free, free to speak, but they don't want people to listen. You have to have a backup. If you run a YouTube channel, you need a backup. Because you will eventually be shut down. There's a war against free speech. You know, I run um, half a million views a month. So it's just a question of time. This channel will be closed down eventually. So my backup is on BitChute. BitChute. Yeah. Uh, more Sweden. Uh, Asap Rocky, this American rapper, he has been in court here in Sweden, as many of you know. And now he's waiting for the verdict. And then he was released out of jail and he immediately left Sweden. I don't think he will be back. Uh, he got a taste of a Swedish justice system, which is ridiculous. Yeah. So good for him. He's out of Sweden. Very, very good. Now, here's the idiot of the week, or maybe idiot of the month. Uh, it's the Gillette CEO Gary Coombe. You know, Gillette, they ran this ad about toxic masculinity and then they started to lose billions because people didn't like it. Their customers didn't like it. Their customers are men. Yeah. They, are, they have been buying these Gillette racers and now a lot of people didn't want to buy these racers anymore. And there are some more products, you know, Gillette products. So they have been losing billions. Uh, so they talked about they talked about this with this CEO Gary Coombe and he said that the intensity of the backlash surprised him but that it was still a price worth paying and it's getting worse yeah he continues he says I don't enjoy that some people were offended by the film and upset at the brand as the consequences. That's not nice and goes against every ounce of training I've had in this industry over a third of a century. So he's sort of bragging now, isn't he? And then he said this. This is crazy stuff. Yeah. He said, but I'm absolutely of the view now that for the majority of people to fall more deeply in love with today's brands, you have to risk upsetting a small minority. And that's what we have done. A small minority. They lost billions. You know, their customers turned their backs on them. Wow. Stupid, stupid man. I hope they learn something from this. I don't buy any Gillette products anymore. And I have so many friends who just hate this stuff. Yeah. Very, very good. <laughs> All right. 
Finally, I want to give you some advice. If you want to win elections, if you have a party that you support or if you run a political party and you want to win, uh, maybe it's a good idea to have your opponents uh, hire Giefer Hofstadt. Yeah, you know, this EU guy in Brussels, this lovely guy, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Giefer Hofstadt, uh, he campaigned in Poland to support the opposition against the populist party PIS. So what happened? PIS widened its lead over nearest competitor by 20%. Yeah. I don't think we should exaggerate the importance of Giefer Hofstadt, but uh, it can't hurt, you know. So maybe you guys in Canada Maybe you should advise the Justin Trudeau campaign to hire Giefer Hofstadt to, to do some campaigning for them. There's another example. Uh, Orb, Orban, yeah. Giefer Hofstadt campaigned for the opposition in Hungary and he was attacking Viktor Orban heavily. Orban's party now enjoys support over 50%. <laughs> And uh, Salvini, you know, Verhofstadt, he's been attacking Salvini heavily. Salvini's party has doubled its support since the last election. All right. Can't hurt. Okay. Be good. Bye.